So we're going to go ahead and launch Adobe InDesign. Before you even open any documents, you might want to set your defaults in InDesign. So you can go into all of your palettes and start to change the values. I think a fresh install of InDesign will have Minion as the default font. So if you never use Minion, change it to something you do use. I always use Helvetica Lite, so I set it to that. Now every time I open up a new InDesign document, it's already set to Helvetica Lite for me. Likewise, with font size, I never use 12 point font, so I changed that to 10. And with your kerning, 99% of the time I set it to optical, so I might as well make that my default also. <laughs> Once you have all your defaults set, now you can go up to File and New and create a new document. Most of the stuff should be pretty self-explanatory, except I want to make sure everybody understands what facing pages are. So I'm going to leave it checked and click OK. And you can see over here in my Pages palette, you have a page with a little triangle and a line. And if I add two new pages, you can see the pages are in spreads. So facing pages really means spreads. If I go back up to File and Document Setup and I turn off facing pages, now in my Pages palette you can see they're single now. So facing pages means spreads and if you turn it off it just means single pages. I'm going to go ahead and delete pages 2 and 3 by dragging them down to the trash can. Now for your assignment, you can use any page size you want, so feel free to experiment. To get started, I'm going to go ahead and grab just a sample of the text for this assignment. So on my website, Students, Advanced Design, Assignment 1, and Text. I think it might be good to grab just the first chunk of Chapter 2, because this will give you the chapter header, some body text, and then there's this little poem here, which you could also uh, style typographically. So just grab something like this, Command-C for copy, and then we're done with that. We can go to InDesign. I'm just going to paste it in. It'll already be in a text box. And we'll make that bigger. Now you can begin to choose a font. Most books choose a serif typeface for the body copy, but for this assignment, it's wide open as long as it's tastefully done. So if you wanted to use a sans serif font, you can. But I'm going to keep this kind of basic, so I'll stick with Minion Pro. And I definitely don't want bold condensed for body type, so... We'll just put that on regular. And then try and figure out what font size you want. Uh, 10 is usually a good starting point. Some fonts you can go as low as 9. Uh, sometimes you can go as high as 12. Uh, it just takes some practice and experimenting. So just to give you an idea, this is set at 10 and 12, so 10 point font size and 12 point letting. I'm going to come over to my Pages palette and just drag my page down to the New button. And then on this page, I'm going to adjust the letting to 14. And it's also helpful to uh, leave yourself a little note. So. We'll do 10 and 12, and go back to page 2.
Shift Option Command V will paste exactly into the same spot. So this is 10 and 14. And then I'll duplicate this page a third time. And we'll make this 9 and 14. Now don't stop there. I mean, you guys can play around with all kinds of different font sizes and lettings. I'm just giving you an idea of how to tackle this. What you want to do at this point is push print. You want to print these pages out and you want to see what they look like. And then you're going to pick out the most, uh, well, you're going to pick out whichever one is most easy to read, whichever one is easiest on the eyes. So you kind of got to use your gut. I know from experience that 10 over 14 is going to work pretty good. So I'm going to go with that. So I'm going to select page one and select page three and drag them down to the trash can. And now I don't need this node anymore, so I'll delete that. So with your body copy set, you can drop your cursor into the body text and in the paragraph styles palette click new highlight everything and then apply the style and then name the style body text move that off to the side now we can begin to tackle the chapter header and title. So we're going to select that line and for starters we'll just make it bigger. We want it to contrast really well with the body text. <clears throat> now there are a number of ways to handle this. So don't feel like you have to duplicate exactly what I did in the demo. Maybe you want it all on one line like this. Maybe you want to break it to two lines like this. Maybe you want to leave it left line. Maybe you want to center it. Maybe you want the word chapter there. Maybe you want a Roman numeral too. Maybe you want the digit too. Maybe you don't need the word chapter at all. Hopefully that'll start getting you to think on a lot of different ways you can go about doing this. So I'll just stick with a single number. I'll make this really big. Now you can see how the two is crashing into the pool of tears. That's because my letting is still set to 14. So we'll switch that back to auto for right now. Now since I made the two really big, um, I don't want to use the same font I use for my body type. I think we can get away with a nice display font or something a little more font just to make the two a little bit more fancy, a little more visually interesting without losing the integrity of the design. So I know that Baskerville has really nice looking too. And yeah, we'll go with that. Now for the pool of tears, let's go ahead and make that Baskerville also. And then we'll set it to all caps. I go into the uh, character palette menu and choosing all caps. And while you're working, if you can memorize the hotkeys and the shortcuts, do it. It'll help you. Now we'll go ahead and make this smaller and track it out a little bit. Now I want to add a little bit more space between the pool of tears and two. 
and I'm not going to use letting. Letting should really just be for paragraphs. When you want space in between elements, do space before in the paragraph palette. And that's right here. Also note that, remember when I said you can set your defaults before you create a new document? If you right click or control click on the ruler, you can change the units to points. Do that on the left ruler and do that on the top ruler. I set my defaults to points, so now every time I open up a new InDesign document, my rulers are already set up for me. I like working with points just because of what I just showed you. I can nudge up and down whatever type I have selected one point at a time so it's real precise. Now if you want to start to play around with ornamentation such as a paragraph rule, that's a feature that's built into InDesign. So don't go around drawing lines all over the place. I can highlight the pool of tiers and come over to my paragraph palette. And in the menu, I can come down to paragraph rules. And then I can choose rule above or rule below. And then check box it on. Check the preview button. And now you can see it happen live. So I can offset it a little bit. Again, working in points makes it a lot more easy. And then I can choose the weight. A quarter point for a roll uh, is usually the way to go. One point is usually way too thick. Now that's not too bad looking, but there's another really cool trick that you can do with paragraph rules as far as uh, creating a background color for the text. So let me cancel this. And I'm going to highlight this text and I'm going to make it white. And now I'm going to come back to paragraph rules. And rule below, we'll check that on. Now for color, where it says text color, I'm going to change that to black. So now I have white text with a black rule. And as I start to increase the weight, I can then give it a negative offset and it'll come up right behind the type like that. So that's a great trick if you want to have a background color for your type. So once you're happy with that, we can highlight the two. And notice that it's still set for body text with a plus sign. These plus signs, 99% of the time, are bad. Um, that means the style was applied, changes were made. You can see when I mouse over it, the little yellow box that pops up, it tells me what the overrides are. We don't want that. We want to make a new style for it. So we can call this chapter numbers. And then we'll highlight the pool of tiers. And give that one. Remember, after you click the new button, you have to apply the style. I wish InDesign was different and it automatically applied the style, but make the new style and then apply it. We'll call this chapter titles. And you see where it says based on body text? That's a way to link styles together. We don't really want that in this case, or, or I don't want it in this case, so I'm going to base it on no paragraph style and click OK. Same thing with the chapter numbers. I want that to be independent, so we'll base that on no paragraph style. 
Now you see this little plus sign down at the bottom that means some text is hidden. If you select your text box and right click and come down to fitting, fit frame the content, that'll automatically expand it for you. So obviously we need to move this up. Maybe not that far. And if you hit the W key, that'll hide all of your margins and uh, text box borders and stuff so you can kind of see what you're working with a little better. We might be able to make this a little bit wider at this point. And then we'll move that back into center. Wherever it went, there it is. Okay. And we're missing something for body copy. We need to we need to show where paragraphs start and begin. And there's two ways to do that, with tabs and space in between. So let's do tabs, or well, not tabs, but first line indent. So I'm gonna highlight this, come over to first line indent, and just start cranking it up. Usually a quarter of an inch is pretty typical, but you might be, sometimes you can get a little more stylish and use really big indents. I see that from time to time. Now again, because we changed something after the fact, we have a little plus sign. Um, we did mean to do that, but it's very important that you come back up to the paragraph style menu and do redefine style. So that'll recreate body text now with a first line indent. So it'll update all of your text for you. Now let's say the first paragraph, we don't want to have a first line indent because many times articles, the first paragraph is not indented. Or maybe we want to play around with a drop cap, which is also in the paragraph palette. And actually we don't, we'll just delete that for right now. There we go. So for the first paragraph, we want a drop cap and no first line indent but all the other paragraphs we do. So how do you handle that? We're gonna make a new paragraph style and apply it. Now we're gonna name this body text intro. The thing is though, where it says based on body text, we're actually gonna leave that because in this case, we do wanna inherit those traits. And the benefit to that is now I can click on the body text style, the original one. And let's say I change the color, make sure you have the preview box checked. If I change the color of body text, notice that even though paragraph one has one style and everything else has a different style, I'm controlling everything. body text is now the source style and then body text intro is going to inherit everything that I change in body text. So that can be very useful in these situations. If you click on your body text intro, come down to drop caps and nested styles. You can see this area here where it says drop caps. This is where you can adjust it, but you can also apply a character style here right on the fly. And you could just call this drop cap. And then maybe you want a, a different font, but you know, don't go crazy. 
Uh, always check the preview box so you can see what's happening. Character color, we'll do red. Now, nested styles are really powerful too. If you've ever read some text where maybe the first few words of the paragraph are bold or in a different color, you would do that with a nested style. So you would click on new nested style and you would create a character style for it. And then it will apply that character style through or up to and then type in your number and then you can choose words, sentences, characters, letters, digits. You have a lot of control here. It's also critical to understand the difference between paragraph and character styles to know what this means. A paragraph style will affect the entire paragraph, okay? Even if I don't highlight it, see how I just drop my cursor in there? And let's say I click on chapter titles, the whole paragraph gets changed. If I just wanna affect a couple of words in the paragraph, that's when you're gonna use a character style. And it's somewhere. So if I make a new style and call this red, character color red, there you go. So character styles affect just characters, paragraph styles affect the whole paragraph. Now based on that, it's critical that you understand the difference between a hard return and a soft return. So let's zoom in. And we'll move that out of the way. Deselect everything and hit W again to turn on your margins and your uh, text box borders again. And when you're setting your defaults, you should come up here to type in the menu and all the way at the bottom show hidden characters. This is a lifesaver. This will show you everything that you don't see. So you can see everywhere there's a paragraph return and all these little dots or spaces. And if you have a tab, it'll be a little triangle. So this is very useful. Now, every time you hit the enter button, you're going to make a new paragraph, even if it's just one line. That's a hard return. If you hold down shift and hit return, it's just a line break. And you can see the symbol for it is this little angle. A line break does not create a new paragraph. So if I apply a paragraph style to this, it'll affect that whole line. But you see right here where I have the line break. If I click on this line, it's going to affect this line and everything else underneath of it. But you see this line where I have the line break? If I was to apply a paragraph style to this, all three of these lines would be affected because as far as InDesign is concerned, it's still one paragraph because a line break does not create a new paragraph.
And finally, the last thing I want to show you is object styles. So in my demo, you'll see I have a page number at the bottom. It's a number with a, and it's inside of a circle. And I did that with an object style. So I'm just going to draw a new text box. And I'm just going to set it on basic paragraph for right now. Type in some numbers. And then grab my black arrow and select it. I want to center it because I'm going to try and put this into a black box. I also want to center it vertically. And to do that, you're going to right click or control click. And you're going to go to text frame options. Now this is really good to know because if you ever need to create an inset, meaning let's say you want to put um, text and you want it to have a colored background and you want some space between the edge of the color and your type, you would give it an inset. We don't need that for this, we just need to vertically align it center and you can do that here. And then click OK. And now because it's centered on both axes, the text will always be dead center no matter how big I make this box. So the lesson here is try and get the software and the computer to do as much work as possible for you. You know, I've seen students where they'll try and manually center it or they'll put a text box on top of a color box don't do that. We've created this whole layout with just two text boxes. So let's say I make my page number block, uh, we'll just give it black, highlight the type and we'll make that white, and then choose an appropriate font. I'm not going to get too picky for this demo, so I'll do something like this. Make sure your kerning is optical. Okay. And let's bring out paragraph styles. Now I'm going to create a style for it just to be safe. So we'll call this page numbers. However, Paragraph styles will only affect the type, okay? A paragraph style will set the font and will set the color, but it's not going to take care of um, the vertical alignment, and it's not going to take care of the background color. And if you did any other effects, like rounded corners or drop shadow, you need to manage that stuff with object styles. So with this selected, I'm going to click New and then apply it. There is one catch though. By default, object styles do not have paragraph styles checked. Sometimes that's what you want. But in this case, we do want the page number paragraph style applied to this object style. So I'm going to click on Paragraph Styles, and now it's checked, and you can see here Paragraph Style Page Numbers, yes, that's what I want. So I'm going to click OK, and now that's all taken care of me. So if I needed for whatever reason to make some more page numbers, I can click and I can select and then there we go. Now it doesn't control the size of the box, but it still takes care of a lot of the work for you. And don't forget to name everything appropriately. Page numbers. So hopefully that's enough to get you started on this assignment and just let me know of any questions.